Hi, this is Topher with Winning WP. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to fix the WordPress white screen of death. If you've never experienced it, I'm very happy for you. It looks like this. This is my website, and it should not look like that. So what does it mean? WordPress's job is to take information on its server and print it to the screen. And a white screen of death means that something is so broken that WordPress can't even print it out. Now, don't be too concerned. This usually doesn't mean that everything is broken or things are terribly broken. Usually it's just one thing, and that one thing is often easily fixed. So what causes it? It's almost always broken code in one of these three places, plugins, themes, or WordPress core. There are a couple of other options, and we'll take a look at those as well. But nine times out of ten, it's in one of these three places. So how do we figure that out? Step one is we turn on debugging. This gives WordPress a voice. By default, debugging is usually turned off on production servers so that you don't accidentally get a warning that doesn't necessarily mean anything, but looks pretty scary and certainly shouldn't be on your website. So we want to take these four options and put them into your WP config file. Let me show you what that looks like. This is the main WordPress install for my website. If you log in with FTP, you'll see something exactly like this on your site. And right here is wpconfig.php. And if you edit it, it usually looks very much like this. Sometimes your host may take out a lot of these comments and leave only the important bits. But this is the default look. So the first thing we want to do is search for WP Debug. And there I have it. It's currently set to false. So we want to take that out and put in the other options. Now let's take a look at what these mean. WP debug was set to false, which means don't do debugging. We've set it to true, so now it's debugging. We've also said we want it to log the errors. So it's going to be writing the errors to a log file someplace. And then WP debug display means Print them to the screen so that we can see them. And then this last one is a PHP directive, not a WordPress directive. And it simply says, display errors 1, where 1 means actually do it. 0 would mean don't do it. So now that we have these turned on, I'm going to save this. And we'll go look at our website again. And there we go. Now we have an error message. It says, cannot redeclare WP auto P previously declared, blah, 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 in app public WP content themes 2017 functions.php on line two. Now what this means is that there's a problem in the theme 2017, and that's the one I was running. Now if you understand the error message, you could go into that theme and try to fix it. It's in WP content themes 2017. And it said it was in functions.php on line 2. And there is line 2. But you don't know for sure if that's supposed to be there or not. I'll let you in on a secret. It's not. And if you took that line out, it would fix it. But if you're not a developer, you don't know that. You don't want to try and get in there and mess around with it. So the easiest thing to do is to remove the theme altogether. Now, don't delete it, because you may want to get it back but you can move it up one folder. And now WordPress doesn't know it's there, but it's still available to you. So now let's go back and reload. Now we have a different error. The theme directory 2017 does not exist. But now, if we go to the admin area, it'll work. And if we go to Appearance Themes, it says the active theme is broken, reverting to the default theme. So if we activate any other theme, now we have our site back. Now it's still not right. It's not the theme you had. And if you want that theme back, then you need to fix it. But on the upside, your site's not broken and people can actually read it. And so now you have time to work on that theme, find a developer or figure it out yourself or any number of things. Now, if the problem had been in a plugin, you could do the same thing. You could grab the plugin and drag it up one folder. If you don't know what plugin it is, it simply says it's in a plugins area, you could remove them all 
and put them up a folder. And your site would come back. And then you would be able to, again, log into your admin area, go to plugins, and you'll see that it, and you'll see the problem plugin has been deactivated due to an error. But now you can put them back one at a time and figure out which plugin was causing the problem. Now, before we get too far, I want to point out that WordPress.org has a page dedicated entirely to the WP debug options. And you can come here at any time to get them. Once your site is working again, you want to remove most of them and set WP debug back to false and save it. That way it's not printing errors to the screen that it shouldn't. And you'll see the site still works. Now, occasionally, WordPress itself can get corrupted. And your error message will say that it's in a file in WP Admin or WP Includes or something like that. And it's actually pretty easy to replace only WordPress. We're once again here looking at your WordPress install. And the only parts of this that are unique to you are WP Config and WP Content that holds all of your stuff. Everything else is generic. It should be the same on everybody's website. And so you can go to wordpress.org and right here at the top, download WordPress and click download WordPress. Right now it's 4.9. Once you have it, open up the zip file and go into the folder that it makes. And you'll see it looks exactly like yours. So we highlight everything and then deselect WP content. Now there isn't a WP config file in here because that one is very unique to you. And then we right click and copy. And then right click and paste. And we're going to replace all of these files. There we are. Just like that, we have a brand new install of WordPress. And our original WP config is still there, and our WP content with all of its stuff is still there. Now, if you're still having a problem, there's one more place to check. Most WordPress sites have a file in their main directory called .htaccess, and you can see mine here at the top, and it has a little dot at the beginning. Now, not all sites have this, so if you don't have one, it either means that you don't need one, or that you do, and it's not there. So if you don't have one and you make one, it won't hurt anything at all. So this can't hurt to do this. But basically, we want to replace the entire contents of this file. So I'm going to open it up, and you may find any number of things in this file. There are lots of different things that put text into your .htaccess file. But this block right here is the one that WordPress needs, and it doesn't need the other stuff usually. Now, you probably can't tell if this is right just by looking at it. I can't tell, but I can tell you where to get a good one. If you go to wordpress.org in the codex, under support documentation, you'll find a pristine copy right here. So I'm going to copy that, paste it in, and then save. Now, if that still didn't fix it and your site is still down, my next recommendation is to talk to your web host. There are log files that they can look at that you don't have access to that may explain what the problem is. And usually they can just take care of it for you. In fact, I would say that your first step should be to talk to your web host. But sometimes they're not available. Maybe it's the weekend or Christmas Day or something like that. The steps that I've shown you are the things that you can try to get your site back up and running. But really, the people with the best access are going to be your web host. So turn to them if you can, and if you can't, Try these steps. If you'd like to learn a bit more about this topic and see a few more steps, check out the link to Winning WP in the description below. If you'd like to learn more about WordPress, check out winningwp.com.